So just over two weeks ago, I released uh, using the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as a cinema camera video, and you guys have been absolutely amazing, giving so much awesome feedback. We just crossed over 100,000 views. So if you haven't already seen that video, check it out after this one. Link will be in the description. So a ton of you commented on that video saying I should check out the Sony because it was primarily made for professional photographers and cinematographers. So so as I did with the Samsung video, this is not a normal phone review. Uh, so I'm gonna spend the next 30 seconds to minute talking about the general phone uh, feel and overall design and my kind of mini one minute take on the actual phone and then we'll get to the fun stuff. So in terms of design, I really like it. Uh, it is incredibly tall and skinny, so it fits in one hand very nicely. However, putting it in pockets since it's so tall kind of sticks out and slides out of a lot of pockets. It also does indeed have a headphone jack. Yes, in 2020, a phone still has a headphone jack, and this is because it has Dolby Atmos. Uh, so if you have a really killer pair of headphones, then you can get a pretty awesome experience for that. It's got dual front-facing speakers that actually sound really impressive. I don't like to get too in depth in terms of the processor and RAM and phones because optimization is always key here. So all I can tell you is that the Android experience is actually very quick, jumping back and forth between apps, opening, closing. I never had any sort of lag issues and the entire experience felt very fluid and very fast. It does come with a 18 watt charger or of course you can do wireless charging. This phone has a 4,000 milliamp battery. And as we transition to talking about the photo and video, I wanna point out that there is a huge difference between the basic stock camera app and the Sony created photo still and pro video app. They both are stock and both come on the phone. You don't have to install anything else. The stock app is going to be your very basic photo and video uh, shooting modes. If you just want everything to be auto exposure and just kind of get the snapshot, that's gonna be the app for you. And the rest of this video is gonna be focused on the pro apps. The photography app is awesome. They basically took their Sony Alpha series menu system and put a more simplified version, understandably, in here. You also have a secondary dedicated um, shutter button on the top of the phone, basically where you would have a shutter button on a normal camera. Now, if the phone's turned off and you press and hold this, this is actually going to bring up uh, the stock camera app, but if you're inside the pro photo app, this is going to be your shutter button. You actually won't see any sort of uh, digital shutter button on the screen. But in here, you can change to different modes like auto, full on manual, shutter priority. You of course can change your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance. You can choose if you want to shoot raw JPEG, raw plus JPEG. About the only thing you can't change is the aperture just because that's fixed into all phones. But of course you can change between the three different lenses that this camera has, which we'll touch more upon in a little bit. Hands down, in terms of apps that come on a phone, this is the best designed pro uh, photo app I've ever experienced. It's crazy fast, it never crashed, not buggy. The haptic feedback that you get every time you're scrolling, it just, the experience was fantastic. In a few minutes, we are going to deep dive into one of the DNG files so you can see what you can kind of do with it. Now, of course, what I was mostly excited about was the video, and that's what all of you guys were commenting about, about how you, know, you can control everything. Just like the Pro Photo Still app, this was the best designed app that I've ever seen. It really is awesome. Now it does lack some key features that I wish it had and hope it gets in future updates. For example, this has no scopes, no histogram, and that was a huge uh, downside for me. I got really spoiled a couple weeks ago on the Note 20 Ultra having a histogram because as you'll see in a couple minutes when we're actually taking a deep dive into the footage, what I was seeing on the phone screen with sun glaring on it is not the end result of what I saw on my computer. And so it just goes to show you how valuable having scopes is. Now again, I know that I could download any of the third-party apps I've already talked about and get those scopes. And if this continued to be my full-time phone, then I would absolutely do that. But I'm just focusing right now on the pro video app that came on the phone. 
Now inside this app, you get a good amount of settings. Again, you can choose between the three different uh, lenses, which do have the 16, 24, and 70 millimeter focal lengths, and they are all completely different lenses. You are gonna get an entirely different feel um, about that, and we're gonna to touch upon that in just a second when we take a look at the footage. But you can also change, of course, ISO. You can change white balance. In here is kind of weird because you can basically, they have like different levels, like blue one, blue two, or change the tint. Uh, it's kind of weird that for how customizable and how like pro this app is, that for white balance, you can't actually input a Calvin number. Now one cool feature is that you can actually set up projects, have all of your saved settings come back instantly so that you can pick up where you left off. You can keep everything really organized and that personally I've never really seen um, from a stock pro photo or video application before. So another really cool feature of the app is if you go into manual focus, you can actually set A and B focus points, allowing you to nail your focus if you're doing some sort of camera move where you don't wanna have to manually control the entire uh, focus throw. You can set your starting focus point and your ending and nail it every time. Speaking of focus, this phone by far has the best uh, autofocus, focus, pull, whatever you want to call it that I've seen of any phone that I've ever used. And honestly, even a lot of DSLR mirrorless cameras. The transition from something close and far away, this is all completely autofocus and it's not jittery at all and it's very smooth and I just love that. So of course I went out into the woods, into the studio, and just got grabbed a bunch of different shots. And here we're taking a look at skin tones, landscapes, color, dynamic range, and all that. So let's take a deep dive into how the footage actually turned out. All right, so what you're seeing actually here is the Venice CS look. So this is essentially supposed to be an emulation of Sony's highest end camera, the Venice. And so this is the clip that if we head to our color panel here, um, so this is what looked like stock out of the camera. And then I've made some adjustments, still not fully done. Let's turn those on. Um, we're still quite a bit uh, magenta here after I fixed the skin tones. If you go into here, you can see in our skin tones, magenta E. You can see the colors starting to break around the nose. It's definitely looking better than the stock. This is the uh, wide angle. Let's grab this still and we'll just try applying it. We'll see what happens here. I think this actually looks really good. I've noticed the hardest thing about this camera is while you have three lenses, you have a 16 mil, a 24 and a 70 mil, um, you really have to think about the restrictions of each one because this is on the 16 mil, which is very different, a completely different sensor, completely different size sensor, um, the aperture. And when you get really close like this, because it has that post-processing done, I don't know, to me, it just looks more muddy. It's definitely passable. Um, you know, if this was a shot that we're trying to cut to for real quick, but this one definitely looks way more pleasant. Um, the skin tones are coming out a lot nicer. So let's see if we can actually push this image. Uh, this is kind of a good base grade. And let's see if we can actually add some style here. And I'm using the Lutify LUTs right here. Of course, I'm using the Rec. 709 LUTs, not the log ones. Okay, so this, this one definitely breaks the image. This is too harsh. You see how on our cheek, you have these like splotches of, um, you know, kind of the tints that this LUT is giving us and it's completely destroying her skin tones. Um, so that you don't want, that is like the worst thing ever. But then if we go to say like this one, for example, apply LUT, this one looks very nice. This one's not really breaking anything that I'm seeing. I do believe this is the 24 mil, which is the best of the lenses. We are going to grab this still and we're going to paste it right onto here, apply grade. Yeah, overall that matches for the most part. All right, I'm pretty impressed with especially the wide and the uh, 24 mil. 
the close-up. Let me see if I applied this grade to it. Obviously the shadows, bring those up. Okay, okay, I guess that's not bad. That's matching well. All right, so clips like this, you can see all of the noise right here. You can see how I completely look out of focus. This I believe is the 16 mil, the um, ultra wide, which I think just did quite terribly. So it was sunny, but I was in the middle of this like wooded area that you can see here. So that was blocking a lot of the sun. Um, so I didn't really go above 400 ISO. So, I mean, it wasn't anything crazy, but you can still see just a ton of the post-processing. And so even though technically I'm in focus, it's applying so much of its noise reduction. It definitely looks a little bit more like a painting type filter rather than sharp. Now, if I go to the 24, I believe, it looks so much more crisp. And you can see, especially in like the hair details and just, well, don't need to go with that. So I thought the 24 mil performed way better and partially due to the fact that the 24 is a F17 and the uh, 16 mil is a 2.2. Here are your three cameras on the back. Again, we got the 24, the 70, and the 16. All of them are 12 megapixels, but you can see the size of the sensor um, gets significantly reduced for the uh, 70 and the 16 millimeter, as well as the aperture on the 24 is best. It's not like swapping lenses with all the same aperture going to the same sensor size. They are almost like completely different cameras. And so if you're trying to match shots, if you're creating some sort of look or film, you're going to get a different looking footage depending on the lens that you choose. Now, once I really decided to stay on that 24, I thought it did uh, quite well. And this is that nice uh, greenish look. You can see it tries to search for uh, focus there for a bit. And you can see a little bit of the gimbal, this phone. It's pretty wide. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about in regards to the footage here is the dynamic range. Now, on the actual monitor when I was filming, I thought it was way worse than it actually ended up turning out. Um, so, for example, this looked near pitch black on the screen. Um, and again, there was some sun. But I wanted to see the dynamic range for if I wanted to perfectly expose the sky. I didn't wanna clip any of these nice clouds over here. Um, all this looked almost like it was completely gone. But of course on the computer, we can see that there's still a good amount of detail. If I were to go into uh, color here, how much can we actually play around with it? All right, so you can actually recover things quite nicely. You can see that, of course, grass and trees are all different shades of green, but here they kind of all get blended together into kind of a mushy green looking. Of course, there's some uh, differences, but like this entire tree looks like it's painted and it's one color. And that is just a good example of what low bit rates do, um, as well as like 8-bit video you don't have all of the colors to pull from. So although I didn't play around with the stills features too much, but here you can see that I've exposed for the sky again and all the trees on the left hand side here are obviously nearly crushed uh, blacks, but I can simply go into the shadows and lift these up. Now, now we can see how much noise there is in the image. But again, now I have control rather than them just applying a ton of noise reduction. I can go in here in Photoshop and do some color noise reduction to take any some chroma issues out of it and then apply just enough uh, to where I would like. So something like that. I don't need to completely get rid of the grain. Uh, I'd rather have a little bit of noise or grain looking, but pretty far to the right here, this is what your phone does automatically with like JPEGs. And you can see just how much, um, that's a bit too far, how much it's really reducing the noise. This is no noise reduction. This is about the healthy amount that I would do it. Cause again, it looks noisy here cause I'm all the way zoomed in. At the normal size, it looks just fine. 
Now to give my final thoughts on how this phone is for cinematographers, filmmakers, content creators, there's a couple ways that I can look at it. For someone like me personally who let's be honest, I'm not gonna shoot my main projects on a phone just yet. This is an absolute great tool uh, for scouting locations, for doing pre-visuals. And then of course, there's the people who want to use this as their main camera. And I'm a little torn because as you all commented on the Samsung video saying, hey, this phone was literally made for cinematographers. You know, my expectations and my bar was set really high for this phone. And in terms of software, I really think they almost knocked it out of the park. Again, things like scopes, the not having Calvin for uh, white balance is a little weird, but the software experience was really fast. No bugs that I experienced whatsoever. And so really like it's eight out of 10 there. But in terms of the final look that you actually get, to be honest, if I was carrying around that Note 20 Ultra or even my iPhone, I'm gonna pull those two out before I pull this one. I think the audio that comes out of it is quite incredible. They really did a good job in terms of the mics and the wind cut filters that they built in. But I think the three different lenses look so different and you almost can't trust them to always match up to each other, especially if you're in a more low light situation. But the biggest part that kills me is the dynamic range. Yes, it's not as bad as I thought when I was actually filming it because once I got on the computer, I could save it a little bit more. That Note 20 Ultra, that thing never clipped the entire sky, at least maybe like clouds on the super sunny days, but the dynamic range was so much better on that camera. Everything else on this phone, I absolutely love. It's a fantastic experience overall. And I think that if you own this phone or you plan on buying it, my biggest piece of advice from a cinematographer's point of view is to make sure that you understand its limitations, take a ton of test shots. And if you're filming outside and you want the best look, definitely wait for a overcast time of day or just an overcast day in general, and you're gonna get some amazing shots. I actually really like the skin tones and how far you can actually push this in terms of color grading. It's still nowhere near what you can do with raw capabilities from a real cinema camera. Even though the highlights may clip sometimes, the roll off was really nice and pretty gentle for a phone. And so that was really impressive to see. So again, overall, just know your camera's limitations, just like anything else. And the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II will be a fantastic camera. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If this had any value to you, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps out the channel a ton. Leave a comment below on what phone I should try to turn into a cinema camera next and how I can step these videos up. Thank you so much for all the continued support, especially these last couple of weeks. I've really enjoyed making videos like this and it seems like you guys like watching them. So as long as those two things remain true, I'll keep making them. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you in the next one.